That expect rogue builders and raining sewage. Nasty. In new series, Britain's Horror Homes. Home is where the heart is. It's our most valuable possession and the one place where we should feel safe. So what happens when it comes under threat? It's like a volcano coming out of the toilet. Everything that was in there, I lost. And when disasters devastate not just your home, but your life. If I'd have been in this kitchen when that had hit, I'd have been dead. All of a sudden, I felt unsafe. Coming up, a sea of sewage brings devastation to one property. You used to dread coming home, and that's a terrible thing to do. A beloved family home is ruined by a runaway builder. The guts and the soul of the house have been ripped out. And one man fights to protect his house from crashing cars. For the catastrophic accident, who is probably dead, killing us. Imagine you've bought your perfect starter home on the outskirts of London. So what happens when a tidal wave of raw sewage and industrial chemicals surges down the street, causing mass evacuation? It had rats, it had tampons, it had all sorts of stuff in it. And anything it was, you flushed down a loo was anything going could, down the road. you could imagine was in there. And the nightmare flood returns year after year after year. The road got dubbed Pooh Muse. Twenty-three years ago, hospital manager Paul Seymour and midwife Joanne bought their first house together. It cost £160,000. We thought we could do it right from scratch and do what we like with it, which mm. we, we do. So, you know, pulled it to pieces and put yeah. things up. We thought we'd live in it maybe ten years yeah. or so. We didn't expect to spend 20-odd years in it, really. <laughs> <laughs> then one evening in November 1998, something happened that would have a huge impact on the rest of their lives. We were actually both in bed, it was asleep, and you suddenly heard all this noise going on, this commotion outside, and you're thinking, what's going on? Looked out the window, not that we could see much, all we could see was loads and loads of lorries. There was this huge bang, um, followed by a rushing sound. It sounded just like we had Niagara Falls outside, there was this constant noise. The couple rushed outside to find out what was going on. It turned out that the manhole cover here had ex well, the manhole cover was down the road somewhere. The whole sewerage was just flooding out and down the road. It was just like a tidal wave coming down the road. And there were lights everywhere, orange lights, blue lights. You even hear screaming, which we realise now was the uh, people inside the houses waking up to find sewerage flowing yeah, through yeah, the houses. Yeah. It was so high that it actually got into some of the cars, hadn't they, the, yeah, the sewerage? Yeah. The water had burst out of a drain right outside Paul and Joanne's house. It almost bounced off our wall and then just flooded down the road. So we, it, it just about missed us. We were lucky it missed us, but then it caught the rest of the 10 houses down the road. Yeah. Um, I mean, really high. When they took a closer look at the flood water, they were shocked at what they saw. Species, uh, there was toilet roll, there was yeah. all sorts of things. Uh, let, let's be honest, it, it had rats. rats, it had tampons, it had all sorts of stuff in it. Anything and it was, you flushed down a loo was anything going could, down the road. Anything you could imagine was in there. Um, the smell. And the smell was there forever. Yeah, it took a long time for that. It took years, that. literally years, for the smell to disappear. But they didn't realise there was something even more deadly lurking in the stinking water. We knew there was sewage because you could smell it. What we didn't know at that stage was that there was also chemicals involved. Um, there's an industrial estate opposite, and they had all sorts of chemicals. Um, got, it got into the system somehow, didn't Somehow it? it got into the system, which it was never designed to handle. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't just the excrement, but obviously all those chemicals that seep through, um, they got onto the, all the possessions, all the clothing. Ten houses in the street were immediately evacuated. They just had, literally had to just go in what they were standing in, um, and they weren't allowed back in the houses, and everything they had was condemned. The owners of the ten properties were later paid the market value for their uninhabitable homes. But thanks to Paul and Joanne's wall, the floodwater didn't reach their property, so they could stay put. When it first happened, we were almost elated. We, we, 
We thought we've obviously not had uh, the problems that the other people had. It was very peaceful and quiet. But the couple's relief didn't last long. The putrid flood was to become a recurring event in their lives and spur Paul on to take militant action. Coming up, Paul from Pooh Muse resorts to drastic measures. I had the balaclava on and I just stood there, sort of nonchalantly just looked at them. And Daryl and Joel find they're not the only victims of their rogue builder. Still owes me money when I found out that he's done this to more than one person now. In Erith, Paul and Joanne Seymour's street had been flooded with raw sewage mixed with chemicals from the nearby industrial estate. The road got dubbed Poo Muse, um, so everybody knew where Poo Muse was in here. Um, yeah, they knew the road where the sewage flowed down. Ten contaminated houses had to be evacuated and condemned. The clear-up operation started immediately costing two million pounds and took several years, bringing chaos to Paul and Joanne's life. OK, no notification, nothing. They started digging up the road, so we had holes, we had blockages, we had noise. They didn't seem to mind doing this at 6 o'clock in the morning um, or late at night. The whole process had a very disturbing effect on the couple. I suppose I felt ill, is the honest answer. For, for the best part of two years, I never had any real quality of life unless I was out of this road. And you used to dread coming home, and, and that's a terrible thing. At the time, midwife Joanne was working a lot of night shifts at the hospital. She needed to sleep during the day, and of course, we couldn't. So basically, I couldn't sleep, she couldn't sleep. Paul tried to talk to the construction company and the water board to make the work less invasive to their lives, but it fell on deaf ears. So he decided a militant campaign was called for. I wanted to disrupt, I didn't want to stop the work because we wanted the work done, but I wanted it done on my terms and not on theirs. So I had the balaclava on and I just stood there, sort of nonchalantly just looked at them with me, the eyes poking out, uh, and they just stared at me. It was like Mexican standoff. There were camera crews outside. Paul's day of action got a lot of media attention. And as work had been held up for 24 hours, the water company finally sat up and took notice. The first thing he did say was that they would consider um, an aspect of compensation. At least a dialogue had been opened. So um, I decided that I would stand down my action. Paul and Joanne were awarded £3,500 compensation, but over the next eight years, they were to see the return of the sewage flooding their street on five more occasions. Oh, well, I thought it was all going to be done and dusted, and that was the end of it, and hooray, you know, we could put a house back on the market and everything would be all right, and then we have another flood, and another flood, and they claim they've sorted it out, and then we have another flood. Then, two years ago, there were two more floods, it came as a complete shock to one new resident. The drains were overflowing, so I thought, that's a bit odd. And then my daughter started screaming because uh, the water started rushing down the road and it just all started coming in and it, it, it was getting higher. The kids were absolutely petrified. It was horrible. The few of us that have been here for that time, we know there's going to be a storm. Make sure you move your car up the road because it's likely to flood, whereas they don't realise, and, and I think to them it's a shock when it happens. Thames Water were fined £250,000 for their part in the original disastrous sewage overflow. They say they are significantly upgrading their pumping stations, which pump waste from the properties to their sewage works, and have also thoroughly cleaned their network of pipes to reduce the risk of any further blockages. But Paul and Joanne have become so down with the situation, they just want out. We can't sell the house. I think to try and sell the house, um, because people know what's happened, we certainly wouldn't get the price we should get for it. We now treat it as a, as a place to, to stay, um, not a home anymore. It's nothing more than that now.